Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for joining me. This is a quick video overview of Synergy Mod. Now this is a compiled build by, I believe it is Xanadroid. I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. But uh, this is a version that does not have force encryption. There's another one floating around that actually forces encryption. So be very aware of that. And I will link in my description below the proper um, uh, URL to go to so that you get the proper uh, build of this ROM. But you will notice that it is in fact running the latest uh, build from, I believe it is January 12th. Uh, this is the current version that is out, and it does in fact run 5.0.2 Android, and you'll see the Synergy Mod version here, and you'll get all your basic information. Now this supposedly comes with a lean kernel, or a kernel in that nature. Now I was having some force close issues with my camera and some certain Google Play services, uh, so I did go ahead and flash Franco kernel, and it resolved those, so be very aware of that. You might have to use a different kernel in order to fix those problems. Now it does have this system update menu, but I do not believe this offers any kind of OTA process. So be aware of that. You will have to wipe and flash or dirty flash accordingly. Now you will notice the very first thing here is in the personalization section. Uh, you can go up in here in the status bar. Now in the status bar, you can adjust the brightness control based on sliding from left to right on the top status bar here. And that will adjust your screen brightness you do have the ability to turn on the quick pull down, so if you swipe down from the right, you'll get your toggles right away. If you swipe down from the left, you'll just get your notification section. Uh, you do have the ability to turn on notification counts. You do have the ability to uh, enable weather from the status bar header if you choose. might require a soft reboot on the weather. Uh, you do have the ability to change your status icon of the battery itself and you can go in there and choose which one you want specifically. You can also change the battery indicator percentage to show within the actual icon next to the icon or disable it completely. And that's all found in the status bar section in the personalization menu. Uh, it does have an equalizer. It is the Viper for Android equalizer. I cannot open it, unfortunately, because it will close the recording, but it is included and it is integrated into the ROM and you can choose whether or not you want to adjust the equalizer on speakers the um, headphones that you use, or a Bluetooth device. So very nice little option. You also have the XD extensions here, which you can adjust your quick settings, which is basically right here, all your toggles and your tiles. So you can go in here and select and choose which priority or which way you want them to be displayed when you pull down your menu there on your toggles. You can also add some if you need or remove them accordingly. Unfortunately, with the current version of this ROM, you do not have the ability to disable the highlighted where it has the two on the top. You cannot disable that like in some other ROMs, but that's the way it is. You can also adjust the DPI on the display through this, and you can pretty much make it whatever you want. Um, I recommend anything above 500, but you can go in there and change it to just about anything you want. You will have to do a soft reboot or a reboot on the device itself for it to take effect. So be aware you do have the DPI changer integrated into this, and it's nice to have. You also have uh, the display menu. Uh, basically, the only thing you're going to find in here that's different is you will be able to access 180 degrees, making it full 360 degrees of orientation rotations if you need to. Um, you also get the font size, and that's going to be based on percentage value instead of just small, medium, large, extra, or huge, or whatever it was. Um, you do have the ability to adjust the ambient display timeout as well, which some ROMs don't offer, so you can adjust that accordingly. You're also going to find your Recents Clear All button through the display settings, and what that is basically is this little Clear All right here that you won't have in a stock version of Android. Um, and you can disable or enable that. You can also relocate the position of that button. So if you want it in the top corner instead of the bottom, it will now be displayed up here. You'll also notice I do not have a search bar and you can basically turn that on if you need. And now it is located up there at the top if you need it. So very nice to have that option all integrated into here. It also has the ability to do expanded desktop. I don't personally use this, but you can go in here and set it up accordingly to just about anything you want if you need that specific utility. Uh, you do have the double tap to sleep on the status bar. So if you double tap on the status bar, it will put the device to sleep. Now be aware, I am having issues and I cannot wake the device. It does not have double tap to wake with this version of Cyanogen Mod or this particular build. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, you will have to uh, install a third-party app or customization to actually enable that. 
So be very aware of that. But it does double tap to sleep at least. You also have your sound and notification menu. And in here, you can basically change up all your sounds. Now, in other sounds, most specifically, is where the volume rocker adjustment sound is going to be uh, enabled or disabled. And that's that little annoying beep indication when you're uh, using your volume rocker. So you will find that in other sounds in the sound setting. You'll also have your charging sounds that you can disable as well or enable accordingly. Now, they do offer quite a bit of ringtones and notification sounds, so that's very nice. I like to have the option of having an unlimited selection almost, and you will find that in here. Now, it does have the heads up notifications and notification section as well found in the sound menu, and you can disable this completely if that annoys you, or you can go in here and set up specific apps accordingly. Uh, you can blacklist them or do you use Do Not Disturb. You can also change up the timeout to never or go anywhere from two to 10 seconds. So that's nice to have that little built-in feature there integrated into Signage Mod or this particular build. Uh, you do have the buttons menu, which is your navigation controls and a couple other things. Now it does come with backlight enabled by default. You'll, it'll say illuminate buttons. Uh, we do not have capacitive keys or buttons, so this is pretty much pointless. You might as well disable it. Uh, you have the ability to enable or disable that navigation bar down there at the bottom. You can, in fact, change up the size if you use the Lollipop default navigation bar. Um, unfortunately, like some other ROMs I've noticed, it does have a problem with uh, downsizing or resizing that back bar button. Uh, it just kind of squishes it, so kind of a bummer. Hopefully they'll, they'll figure that out and fix that soon if that can be fixed, but just be very aware of that if you use the navigation bar. Like I said, I, I use Pi Controls. You can find that on the Google Play or um, through searching Google, you know, Pi Controls is pretty common, and uh, you'll find that if you don't use the actual navigation bar down here at the bottom. You also have the power menu button, and you can go in here and customize that power menu. Uh, most of you know that stock Android just comes with power off like you see here when you push the power button. So you can actually go in here, set up a reboot menu, screenshots, airplane modes, sound panels accordingly, and then when you hit it again, you'll notice all of these come back and you'll actually see your reboot options. Now you will have to go in development options to enable the advanced reboots, and I'll go over that later in the video. But that is in the power button menus. You have the ability to use the power button to end your phone calls, and uh, you do have the ability to use the home button, but since we don't have capacitive buttons, you'll have to have the device on or go through other means to make that work. You also have the ability to change up your long press or double tap actions accordingly based on their menu or search, search buttons or buttons respectively. You can also use the volume rockers to weight the device if you want to, or you can use them to use um, specific functionalities with your music player in terms of when your device is on or off based on the playback control tick here. You also can reorient the swap volume buttons, which is basically going to invert your volumes when you're on a landscape or horizontal um, orientation. So it's a pretty cool little feature that you'll find in the button section. Everything else there in the device settings selection is going to be pretty much the same. You do have the personal section, which has the system profiles, and you can go in here and just disable it if you don't use that, or you can set it up accordingly and toggle certain specific things based on your location. So it's nice to have that, and you can set that up to use with the power button menu as well through the customization I showed you before. Uh, Security is pretty much all the same. You do have privacy, and you basically have your privacy guard where you can disable certain applications from accessing your personal data. You can blacklist your phone numbers or certain phone numbers if you want to keep people from calling you. You can go in here and filter notifications and do things specifically through those means if you need to, and that's all found in your privacy. So some very nice integrated settings there. You do have your Super SU functionality in these settings if you don't want to just use the app itself, which is just going to open the app. You also have the ability to customize your kernel performance, but if you aren't using the stock kernel that comes supplied with the ROM itself, that's probably not going to be very useful. Um, as I mentioned before, in the developer options that you will enable, you will see the advanced reboot in here, so make sure you tick that on if you do in fact want the ability to have the advanced reboot options and selections available. So without that, you obviously won't have that extra optional menu. So make sure you tick that, and that's found in developer options. Everyone knows how to get there. 
But that's pretty much signage and mod in a nutshell, guys. Hope this video definitely helps you. If it does, give me a thumbs up on this video and this overview. Uh, I got more stuff on the way. And until next time, peace.